If you're the NCAA and you're sitting in that stupid office in Indianapolis where we happen to live, it's a great city. It's a great town. Right. And there's a dumb institution that is ruling over college football. Because if you don't want these people dancing yeah. in bowl season, Supposed to be on Thanksgiving break. Starts today. Hey, NCAA. Battle, 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 yeah. Battle, yeah. Battle, 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 What's that? Let us bowl? Battle, 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 like the game? No. Nope. I believe what they're saying is the people that are at the NCAA are a bunch of assholes, and I couldn't. <laughs> I graduated high school in uh, 2005. And when I went to West Virginia, we were introduced to the NCAA on day one. We had to go through a 85-page pamphlet about all the rules and regulations that the NCAA put forth so that they can help the student human athletes live their best life in college. Sure. You're telling me an undefeated team with this fan base Woo! doesn't deserve to be dancing? Come on. You deserve every asshole chant. You deserve every time I step onto this microphone on ESPN, what? on YouTube, what? on ESPN Plus, what? on TikTok, what? on Twitter, what? and on Instagram. What? You deserve every time I say, you're a bunch of dipshits. You don't deserve to be a part of college sports. Yep. We're going to try to do a show today. I don't know how we're going to. I started asking questions like, hey, I have no faith in the NCAA, but I'm just tank top stooge. Okay, don't I don't know anything. Sure. Is there any chance these people make the right decision for JMU before we get our game day there? And they said, probably not. I said, well, why is it just understood that they're going to make the wrong decision all the time by everybody? I say today, we take a stand against the NCAA. You're an embarrassment. Okay, you're an embarrassment. Yeah. All right. yeah. Boom. There it is. Yeah. Get loose. Get loose. There you go. Couple jabs. Couple jabs. There it is. There it is. Yep. Duck. Duck. From taking Reggie's Heisman mm -hmm. to ruining people's lives right. all over little minuscule things to getting mad about hamburgers and cheeseburgers right. to majoring in the minors and being dumb all the way through. Today's the day we all say, NCAA, we're tired of your stupid shit. You know? It's about time. Like, this isn't, this isn't the SEC that is going to get to a point that they're probably not even going to need the NCAA. Right. Let alone the Big Ten, and who knows what's going to happen with the Pac-2 and potentially the Mountain West. This is the Sun Belt Conference. This is supposed to be who the NCAA is looking out for. Yeah. This is supposed to be who they're supposed to be helping. And all you hear all these people say is, you're the most corrupt organization that is somehow in power of futures, happiness, college experiences, and inevitably, millions and millions of dollars. Get them the hell out of this whole thing, and maybe the Tez Walker situation, Kurt Signetti talked about it. That was so dumb. That was from the very beginning of the season. This kid who goes to a school doesn't even get to step foot on campus or play any football because it was the COVID year. Then he goes to Kent State. The head coach of Kent State decides to leave to go be an offense coordinator somewhere else. So he transfers closer to home in North Carolina where he has a sick family member, where yep. his thing is, and they're like, nope, 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 you can't do that. They punish this kid yeah. for no reason at all. And they're doing the same exact thing here. There is no upside for the NCAA. I have not learned of one thing that the NCAA has done where you go, yeah, that's that's good decision. Good call. That is it. They're power hungry, greedy dumbasses who have been somehow put into a position of power that they do not deserve. Well, I think you nailed it. You like you hit it on the head yesterday too when you were talking like they grandstand on trying to protect and look out for like the student human athletes. 
And like in a situation like this, and Tez Walker, obviously, like the only, I mean, granted, it, yes, it is hurting the university if they can't go play in a New Year's Six Bowl because all that money's not coming in. But this is just, all it's hurting are, are the kids on the football team who are undefeated right now and have like this opportunity to kind of remember this for the rest of their lives. And now they're, that, that, that option's not there anymore. In the off season, are these JMU Duke football players sweating, puking, and working their ass off to be the best football team they could be, AJ? Absolutely. In the summer, when it's 110 in these beautiful hills of Virginia, are they running sprints on that field, trying to become the best football team of all time? 100%. When they're going to school, are they trying their best to stay eligible and be as smart as possible so they can represent JMU on the football team? Yes. Are they cheating? Are they videotaping other teams trying to get signs? No, absolutely not. Oh, no. Have they murdered anybody? I don't think so. Have they stolen from anybody? Probably not. Yeah, well, let them bowl. Yeah. Amen. Let them bowl. Amen. Let the boys hey, bowl. What is, does the NCAA have to come up with an explanation of why they made their decision to keep them out? I would like to know. This is, this exactly, in the NCAA, is in the same city that we live. Yep. In the NCAA, whenever we were just a lowly YouTube show. Yep. You know? Oh, yeah. They would have to hear the things, you know, that I potentially said about them. I've hated this organization since <laughs> 2005. When I first got introduced to them, I don't do well with authority to begin with, let alone ones that are inept at all stops. Yeah. They were hoping to God that that little YouTube show did not get a bigger platform. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. And I'm okay being the one who utilizes ESPN's airtime to say that the NCAA is archaic, stupid, and needs a full rebuild. I will do that forever. You got a really nice building there in Indianapolis that you've probably stolen off the backs of most of these student human athletes that you build. You're people that have no reason to have any say in anything because you've accomplished absolutely nothing. You take Heismans, you ruin dreams. In this city, these people don't deserve to be on the receiving end of your stupidity. Take a lap, take a hike. All of you should retire. We can't wait until the next generation of people are running the NCAA. Hell yeah. Talk your shit, talk your shit. It's real. Also, is the college football committee tied to the NCAA at all? Like, do, can they just say, who cares about the NCAA, and be like, this school needs, deserves a New Year's Eve six bowl? So it's interesting you say that, because the Sun Belt Conference has come out and said that we are completely okay with JMU playing for our championship, yeah. but it's the NCAA's rule. Oh, they want. Damn. Okay. Oh, okay. Love that. Georgia's there, too. Yeah, yeah. With no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy. Uh, I don't know if Kurt Signetti is necessarily screaming that <laughs> no, right. from the rooftop. A reunion with Nick. But don't you think these guys in this school who have committed so much to football deserve a little bit of a payoff at the end yeah, of the year? Yes, yeah. yes. For the good of the student human athletes. We, just, we talked about it yesterday. It just seemed like this was a situation where, you know, you, you can put everything in the past aside and, like, they had a chance to make it right. Like, you know, they, they, they barely ever get it right. This seemed like a pretty easy way to, like, hey, we can make this right, you know, and we can go babyface here and maybe get a little goodwill moving forward. But obviously that was a pipe dream and probably stupid to think that they, they would think that way. I was asking those questions to, like, Reese and Herbie and Pete and everybody, yep. and they're all on – everybody's on the same page. Yes. Even if you were to ask App State, yeah. App oh, yeah. State would say, let them go. Yeah. If you were to ask anybody else in the Sun Belt, they'd say, let them play. It's just like the Tez Walker situation. Nobody is happy with the ruling, so it makes no sense that you would stand by it, double down on it, triple down on it yeah. like they have, other than the fact that you just want people to know – that you have the authority in the situation. And congratulations to you dumbasses for having Well, and like Coach said, it, uh, the big dog stepped in in the Tez Walker situation and eventually made it right, and he thought he would do the same. And because of the Ted, Tez Walker, because they stepped in, and he is now on the field and playing, I thought they, like Ty, I thought they would make the right decision, but that just didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, after Mark Emmert left, you would think, like, maybe there's a chance the new guy, but all this talk, and you mentioned that the NCAA building is in Indianapolis, and it is. 
I feel like because of how great JMU is, I take it upon myself when we get back to Indy to go to the headquarters and take a huge shit right on yeah. the, the, the patio. I'm with you. Up, leading up to the NCAA. Uh, I'm Someone's got to do it. I'll be the one. There, there's a lot of people dumping on streets in Indianapolis. <laughs> Bingo. True. I, I can add one more. Yeah, yeah. Yep, go ahead. Yes. Do we like the NCAA? <laughs> Unreal. Do we like Pat? Yeah. Nice. Maestro. Do we love the Dukes? Yeah. That's awesome. Coach. Please. All right. Yeah. J M U. That's sick, dude. Hey, thank you for joining us, Paizan. I genuinely appreciate you making time out of your life for this. Yeah, man. Let, let's just dive right into it right there. The first question there is, do we like the NCAA? Obviously, it was a resounding no. Was there a time this year where you thought the NCAA was going to make the right decision as your team continued to climb and become undefeated? Was there hope and optimism at any point this year that the NCAA would maybe see what you guys have built and give you a little bit of love for the bowl season? I thought they'd make the right decision last summer when we petitioned the first time because we were the first team to ever make the transition in one year, play a full FBS schedule and uh, go to 85 scholarships and win the Sun Belt East Conference. <laughs> Is that which good? We did in year one, that's decent. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but they didn't. And then um, I thought maybe there was some pressure on them to make the right decision this time around. And because they screwed up the Tez Walker thing and, and the head guy stepped in and basically made the right decision for him, I thought he would do the same thing for us. But, you know, when you have four committees ruling on something like this, it's hard to get three people to agree on anything, yet four committees. But you know what? When you can hide behind a committee, like I wish when I was asked... I wish when I was asked, like, why did you punt? I could say my subcommittee recommended I punt. <laughs> Take charge and lead, leader. Talk your shit. 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 You should talk your shit, Kurt. Uh, obviously, you coach at Bama, then you go to IUP, and now you're here at JMU. Your overall coaching record is 118 in 34. Okay. You're a dog, dude. Yeah. That's you're 34 too many. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I understand we're trying to win it all. Why was JMU the spot for you, though, after going to a couple of different places? Well, you know, I learned a lot from Nick. When I left Bama, I took a chance on me, a very unorthodox chance. It worked out. JMU was a winner. There were very few places you could win big consistently. At that time, we were FCS. You could win a national championship any given year at Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, North Dakota State, and JMU. Now, we made the transition up. We were ready for it um, in a lot of different areas, which we have proven by winning the Sun Belt East last year. And if we win one of our next two, theoretically, we would be the Sun Belt champions since we beat Troy already, last year's <laughs> champion, oh. who we couldn't play. <laughs> Talk your shit. Yes. Talk, Talk your, your shit. shit. Talk your shit. Tone digs from Holiday Park, Pittsburgh yes. Italian as well. Coach, being from there, you have the number one rush defense in the country and the number one sack team in the country. So that scratches me right where, where I itch. Does that come from being from the city where we stop the run, we get to the quarterback, and how awesome is that knowing that your defense is going to go up and go out and wreak havoc every game? Oh, yeah, we watch still curtain cut-ups all yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, uh, you know, we're tenacious. We've always stopped the run here. We're number one in the country. Uh, number two, I think, right now by half a yard. Number one in sacks. Jalen Green was going to set an NCAA sack record. 15 and a half. But, you know, his statistics didn't count because we weren't bowl eligible. It's like we don't exist. Here, here's what I can kind of like equivalent it to. It's kind of like a junior high mentality. You can join our group, but we're going to dump on you for two years first. Nice. Yeah, what's the deal? So, Coach, and I don't want to harp on how dumb the NCAA is, but it's hard not to. Like, did you know when you were coming here that, like, this existed? This is... Hey, I'm real. Let me tell you. 
I knew this existed because I came from Elon. I was there two years, right? Took over a program, turned it around. Hold up. Turn it around. Yeah. Yeah. Talk your shit. Yeah. Talk yeah. your shit. Yeah. We were. <laughs> So anyway, my first year at Elon, they were like five and 50 when I went there. We played JMU for the conference championship. And I looked at JMU's team, I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> the next year, well, we're 54 and three at home the last seven years. Pretty good. I like to remind the team one of those losses was to my Elon team. <laughs> oh, hey. Home field advantage is a real deal here at JMU. And I'm gonna let you know this. I think whatever the NCAA is taking into account everything, the 85 scholarships, the transition in there, you guys scheduled FBS schools your first year in there. Don't you think like D1 environment should count as one of the like requirements on whether or not you should be treated the same as everybody else? This has been the best environment that we've experienced. Oh yeah, for sure. sure. We've been, <laughs> yeah, every power five school. We've been in the Pac-12. We've been in the SEC, we're in the Big Ten, right. we're in all these, this is the best environment that we've had. I feel like that should be something. And are you guys pitching that when you're talking to the NCAA? Is that a part of the conversation or no? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm disappointed that somebody didn't take the bull by the horns. Uh -huh. And when you say there's four committees that had to vote on this in less than a week, I mean, give me a break. Yeah, it's, a, it's absolutely absurd. I hope this weekend will maybe do a little bit more nudging for a right decision to be made. But the NCAA has proven time and time again that there are zero brains in that building. Hopefully, they will find some in this particular situation. Because the Sun Belt has already said, they, right? If the NCAA says good, you guys are good, right? Hadn't the conference already said True. that? True. Yeah, they have, right? Yes. Hmm. Some bout said it's not on us, it's on NCAA. If the NCAA says yes, some bout says well, you guys are good to you go. You detect a trend here, everybody's <laughs> passing the buck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everybody's doing that. AJ has a question for you, Coach. Coach, for you as a coach, and you're talking about being a leader, obviously I feel like you have a complete control of what's going on here at this university and your football program, but is it nice in some sense that you guys all obviously have a common goal that you're going towards, but now you guys kind of have a common enemy as well to where this is where we set our sights. And that's not what drives you, but at least it has something that this, this is energy one way or the other, whether it's negative towards somebody or what. Is, there, is it nice almost that you have something that you guys are all fighting for together? Well, you know what? I, I, last year we had a big chip on our shoulder because we knew we couldn't go anywhere, right? This year we really didn't. Our goal was to win them all, and I thought common sense would prevail. But now, you know, we have developed this chip on our shoulder here in the last 48 hours, yeah. and it needs to grow by Saturday because we got a tough game coming up. Let me tell you, App State, they're good and they're playing good. Yeah, but they're running into a buzzsaw. Yeah. Yeah. I think that has always been something the football gods have rewarded people that have gotten screwed. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned when you were looking around, you know, before you took this job, the JMU was one of those places where it's like, hey, they have a chance to win a national championship every year. But we, we talked to Pete Thamel, and, and, you know, he's been covering college football for a really long time and he basically said like hey no one's done what they've done transitioning to the move up when you did take the job was that the expectation like hey we're gonna hit the ground running and obviously you know you have to you know do the the two-year deal or whatever but did you expect to be this good right away when you came in moving up to you know a, a bigger division truthfully you know nothing that the JMU football program accomplishes surprises me because we have such a great championship culture our guys are used to overcoming adversity, obstacles, and being cool when the chips are down. Nothing we do surprises me. How do you find the guys, right, to build your culture as quickly as you did? It's not easy, especially whenever everybody else is looking for the same exact type. What type of player are you looking for, and why have you been so successful finding your locker room? Well, I think there was tradition here before I took the job. When you look from 2016 on, JMU's won big, right? But, you know, the hit, so there's a culture of winning. But the head coach then becomes responsible for creating the identity and the culture. And basically, what do we look for? I mean, you got to have good players, right? But there's a lot of good players out there, and you got to develop them. Character's big. I'm big on character. I'm old-fashioned. I'll look at the transcript, see how many absences a guy has, stuff like that. You know, I'm a little bit old school in that regard. Yeah. And then kids assimilate into our program quickly because we have such a great culture. 500 yards against UConn. Ooh. McCod's a guy. Wow. I mean, defense obviously you're wreaking havoc. On the offensive side, you're phenomenal. I mean, it is a never – it feels like you guys are a buzzsaw yeah. on both sides. Is that the plan? Obviously, that's the plan. Well, that's the ideal plan. 
<laughs> and we played better on offense the last two weeks. We still got to start better as a team and play four quarters. I don't think we've played a four quarter game yet. So the goal is start faster, still finish, and play really well in between. But our defense has been phenomenal all year long. Yeah, keep you in everything. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, obviously you're one of the best coaches in college football. And anytime there's even a little success for coaches in college football, right away it's, hey, this guy, you know, is getting offered by Oregon or Texas A&M right now is what everyone's asking about. Are you going to get buried in the JMU field? Because it feels like this is the greatest <laughs> environment in college yes. football and there's no point to ever leave. Such a great place like James Madison. I mean, why would you ever lose, leave a good thing, right? Yeah, exactly. So I ask our players to stay focused on what's important, that, their preparation, which leads to positive performance. I got to do the same thing during the season, right? And yep. I, I mean, I know, look, I'm 62 years old. Now, I plan on coaching until I'm about 75, all right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> you look good. But I know the grass ain't always greener. Hey, Amen. 62 years old? You got lotion. You got, hey, you got good. Hey, yeah. hair looks good. Oh, yeah. You, good yeah, you look skin. young. Yeah, you yeah. got little pies yeah. on. Okay. We love her. You should take this in. Do you guys love the NCAA? <laughs> um, you're from Pittsburgh, right? What high school did you go to in Pittsburgh? I was born in Western PA. My dad was coaching at Pitt at the time. Uh, we lived in a small town called West Leechburg. Oh. We had cousins in Plum when we moved to West Virginia. I told you about this. They had a pool, Holiday Park, where you live. I'm from Holiday Park. He's yeah. from Holiday Park. You know, it's good My water. brother Frank and I went back there about four summers for a week, swam in the pool, and then they moved. So, uh, you know, and then went to West Virginia, as did you. So, you were quarterback, obviously, at West Virginia. Your dad was football coach. You were ball coach. You knew just forever you were going to be in the football world, you're going to be a football coach? Yeah, man. We went to West Virginia in 1970 under Bobby Bowden. He took over for Jim Carlin. And I was on the sideline locker room for every game and at halftime. I knew in 1970, when I was in third grade, I was going to coach. You didn't know this was going to happen, though, I don't think. And if you did... What a dream come true. He got signs all over the place saying this Pittsburgh boy, this West Virginia boy, he's loved here in the hills of Virginia. I will, I will tell you a quick story. My, my dad passed last fall. He's in the College Football Hall of Fame. He was a great man. But early in my career, I was probably 24, 25 years old. He said, you keep your eye on that James Madison job. That job's got potential. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rest in peace. Uh, what a call. Coach Signetti and uh, Kurt, we can't thank you enough for the hospitality. We can't thank you enough for joining us. And we can't thank you enough for putting together a football team that is worthy of everything, even though the NCAA says the answer is no. You're the man, Paisan. You need to know that. Appreciate the opportunity to be on. Go Dukes! That a baby. What a beast. Yeah. How about him as soon as he gets here? Yeah, give me that mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me that mic. <laughs> you hear that one? What is it? Big something. Oh, yeah. All right. He's wearing sweats. Yeah. <laughs> yep. you can He's tell. got a bruised inside of his knee.